you know, when you think of New York City, especially over the last three years, you think of all you've gone through here. I mean, it's not been a, an easy road for you. Uh, you know, I think we've all gone through a lot of things, but in uh, Texas, it wasn't the same as what you have experienced up here. And we just sort of press on and do things, but it's like the enemy tried. If there's one place he really tried to shut down, it was New York City. Let's let him know. God has opened this place up in a new way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, I want to share and connect things together of what we're doing. I have gone through my own transition. I've got two. I mean, you know, I was thinking about you too. It's been 25 years since God put you in my life. Please stand up, Leanne and Carissima. I, I mean, we were doing a meeting. We were doing a meeting in Detroit, Ann Arbor, and I'm going to tell you, the Lord just connected us together. I started to prophesy over those girls, and I, last time I saw Leanne, she was on BET, the, the TV show, and I mean TV station, and so I have watched the Lord keep his hand on you for 25 years. Let's thank God that he does that once he decides to move. And then you met Daniel and Amber 10 years in Israel. We head from here tomorrow back to Israel. John Price is going with us. And it is really a, a blessing that, uh, you know, to align with God's land, his sovereign land that he created as the prototype nation for us to look at. And so, but I can't say, I can't think of a better book for you, Joy in the War. Uh, we flew in once when no one was flying in over there, and they were hosting a worship gathering, uh, and the whole place had been shut down because of this war, and you couldn't, you couldn't get in, and we said, we're going. My wife, who doesn't go often, also went. Uh, and we just knew in the midst of the war we had to worship. And it was very intense. They've lived through two wars in Israel. And, uh, you know, once you go through it, you have a great testimony when you come out of it. And so it's just always an honor to thank God for those who have blessed God's covenant land because they get blessed. Let's thank God for that. It's amazing. Now, as I said, I have a long history up here in New York City. I will tell you one story. The first time I ever flew into New York City, it was old LaGuardia uh, Airport, and it was uh, really interesting, you know, because I'd really never gone around the city and didn't know what to really expect, and I flew in, and when I got down to get my luggage, because you had to check your luggage and then check your little tag, they don't do all that anymore like that, and uh, there was a guy standing there, and the guy was holding a sign, Dr. Charles Pierce. Well, I just grabbed my bag and <laughs> said, I'm here, and went and got in the car with him. And I got in the car, and I was being very nice, and I said, uh, I'm so excited to be up here with you. He said, why? <laughs> and I thought, well, I, I'm looking forward to seeing leaders and pastors. He said, where are you from? And I said, Texas. He said, you didn't fly in here from Florida for this meeting I'm about to take you to? And I thought, boy, I'm about to be a fish in the river right now, you know. <laughs> and I said, no, I came from Texas. He said, you must not be the same Charles Pierce they're expecting at this meeting. He turned around and he brought me back to the airport, put me out. Not very nice, but threw me out, really. And, and 
it was quite an experience and welcome that you need to know who you are in New York City. <laughs> if you don't, you can get in a place you ain't supposed to be. Now, but it's been a joy to be able to serve up here. It's been probably 25 years since I've been in this area. And so uh, it's, a, it's a real blessing to be with you. Now, here's what we've been doing. I believe the Lord has been regathering us, and he's been pulling into, he's been saying, I've got a remnant they've endured, and they're pulling that glory realm that I have in the heavenlies into the earth realm right now. And see, that's all of you out there. And seeing all of you, and it does nothing but encourage us that God has a remnant. Say that out loud. God has a remnant. And he always raises that remnant up in a new era. And so we're in this new era that is a historical era that started at Feast of Tabernacles in September of 2019, and then by Passover, Jody was showing you the book that Charisma, uh, that Charisma asked me to write. They said, can you write a book since you're not traveling in eight days? And I said, well, I don't have anything else to do. And God had shown us in August that Passover 2020 was going to be a historical shift worldwide. Well, it became a historical shift. We were all shut down. We were all closed in. Not only was Israel participating Passover, but the Lord saw fit that his whole body worldwide would be pulled aside at that Passover as he intended in the word of God. And we would begin to look at him in a way we hadn't seen him so that when he brought us back out, we would be ready for this season that he has left us in this earth for, to contend for his glory. Poke somebody next to you and say, I know he has left you here for a time such as this. Now, this era that we're in is about determining who is going to rule. See, it's, it's called from Hebrew a pay era, which pay is linked with the voice. It's linked with how you decree your future. So this whole era that we're living in, these 10 years, Ahead is about how we speak for, by faith, our future. And I know by pulling us all aside, the Lord I know personally with me, after traveling an uh, average of 550,000 miles a year for 40 years, pulled me aside and said, I'm going to redo you and reassign you. Now, I feel like many of you are going through the same thing. He's pulled you aside, he's redoing you, and he's reassigning you. Matter of fact, Leanne, your life is about to take a turn you would not expect. So get ready, and get ready to put that blinker on quickly, because you're going to head down a path you would not have thought you would have head down. Now, so that's going to be awesome. See, I'm looking out here, and I'm seeing all of us. And we remain. Say that out loud. I remain. remain. Well, you know, not everybody did remain. And he left you here for a time such as this. But in the midst of it, we have to know that this whole era is a war era. Now, and I think we're seeing that come into play in a way that we wouldn't expect. And it's accelerating. 
Now, I wrote another book out there called Future War of the Church, which God showed me in 1986 in 10-year increments through 2026 where we would be. And during that time, I was working into the Soviet bloc countries and working with China. And now we're seeing both of those nations come to a forefront. When God showed it to me, he said China would become the most predominant nation of financial control worldwide by 2026. Well, now, when you start looking at that, that says we have four years to turn things. See, we're, we're like, uh, remember Jonah didn't want to go and give Nineveh the opportunity to repent. He got mad because God was going to spare him. See, God, what, what the Lord has shown me, and he showed me years ago, again, starting in 1986, that this nation would be at its most divisive crossroad by the year 2026. But in that, everybody say, but God, <laughs> we still have the opportunity to turn it. I mean, all we got to do is start saying during this era what God is saying and watch the Lord unfold his plan in the earth. Now, I'm not sure how long uh, uh, Bishop Mott has been here, but this wasn't here when I first came. So it shows you for a time such as this, he now has established a center here so that God has access to change the entire territory. And when you start seeing how God works, you just watch with him and you go with him and you watch how he's turning. You watch your signpost. Daniel and Amber left Israel in March of 2020. Her dad died suddenly, young man, 60, died suddenly, and so they had to leave Israel. They got here, and then everything shut down. God said, I'm going to keep you in America for a time such as this. And they would try to get their tickets done. They'd try to go back. They'd try to do everything they could do. They've got their house over there. They've got every, it was just a, the ministry center where people come from all over the world. And yet, God said, no, I will order your steps. I brought you out. I'll bring you back in. It wasn't till two weeks ago, all of a sudden, we started seeing the signpost that the Lord was doing so that we leave from here and go back to Israel. First time in over two years and almost nine months that the Lord has chosen that path. See, I think when we start seeing how he's moving the path, and he has to have a triumphant, glory-filled people that's willing to put their feet somewhere and walk because every place their foot steps, it belongs to them. See, other religions believe that. We, we have right to it. See, God gave us covenant right to it. So, I believe he is now, in this season of warfare, changing our path. And we're going to have to not think the same way we have thought in past, in past seasons. We're going to have to think in different ways. We're going to have to watch him move. Watch how he leads us. Go where he leads us. Leads us in unconventional ways. Because we are coming into an incredible harvest season. 
See, God has set places up like this to become harvest storehouses in days ahead. I think of Peter and Tricia and New Jersey and what he's done and how he's used the prices to mobilize the 13 original colonies. All of a sudden, he's calling us to be redirected, redefined, and accomplish his purpose for the future. Because, see, there's principles of harvest that he is now activating in us. I want to activate some of those here because we started uh, uh, decreeing those earlier today. Those principles of harvest means you need to get ready to multiply. Everybody say multiply. You need to know there is a perfect time for you to come into a new expanded form. See, that's harvest. You need to understand that there is a place God is already destined to get you to. See, harvest has a place. Harvest has a time. And harvest has a mentality for multiplication. Lord, I loose that over us right now. I loose it from right here in the Bronx area. And we decree that now there is an activation and a multiplication and an expansion that's coming. One of the things the Lord's saying to us is you're going to have to be free in this time of war. A time of war does not confine you. It doesn't produce fear in you. It's actually what causes you to rise up and say, I don't think I can do this, and yet you keep going. And in the midst of it, before long, you have broken into a whole new dimension. And this harvest dimension we're breaking into becomes very important for us to understand. Now, when I think of New York City, I feel like over the last three years, the Lord has attempted to cause vision to be lost. And what that scripture means in Hebrew is, without a vision, a people do what? <clears throat> well, that word means without prophetic utterance that can cause you to see into your future, you go backwards, and eventually you have lost your way. I decree right now that your vision is on the way. God brought me here, and I haven't traveled in like this in uh, uh, two and a half years, and God said, you are to go there and tell them their vision is now on the way. They have endured to see. Now, I want to say that again. You have endured so that you will see. Your vision is on the way. And in that thing, the Lord is saying to us, I will now start a divine recovery and restoration. It will not be one that man orchestrates. It will be divine, and I will realign, and I will reorder, and I will start bringing you into that place so that you will recover fully. But he said, choose this day to redeem the time. See, that means buy back what God has already paid for for us. And think circumspectly, walk circumspectly, and see how God sees. So all of a sudden, when you see what the enemy has tried to steal, you snatch it back. This is a time when the Lord says, in this season of pay, you need to shout payback. Pay 
you need to say it's coming back what has been taken. And with that, this year is about building our future. See, every year in Hebrew has a key meaning. And in the midst of it, we have to look. And I spoke on uh, uh, how Nehemiah looked at things this morning. But we have to look at how will we build our future? How will we put the platform together? Where will we put that together? How will we begin to add sons and daughters to that which we will be doing? How will the framework come in place? How do we reorder things? That's why this meeting after three years Going through these boroughs becomes very important because we're now setting a new order of building throughout New York City so it can extend the house out. And so it becomes important we see this. So with that, we get now into an atmosphere where things are changing. Nations are being rearranged. Your life is being rearranged. It doesn't take away from God's sovereign plan where he says, I want you to speak what you want to see built, what you want to see built for your future. I want you to start speaking it out loud. I want to define it. I want to show it to you, and then when I bring you back in the present time, you have already seen the future, and you start saying, this is what God sees. See, I think about the book that we were given earlier about the Bronx. See, God's not in time like we're in time. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever but we're made in his image, that means we have a past, we have a present, and we have a future. And see, the beauty of the Lord is you can't just constantly be going back and dealing with your past. What God does is as you keep stepping by faith, he takes something in your past, even something great, great, great grandpa did. And it might have been awful, but he knows that you're going to reconcile it because you're seeking him. So he takes that situation, he sits it right in front of you, and you can't quite see the future till you step on the past. And you have a right to put your feet on it and reconcile. But then he also can do what this book's about. Look back and say, here's a DNA decree that occurred like he did with Abraham. He spoke to Abraham and said, you're not going to see any of this for 400 years. And he can say, this occurred in another generation. I had this person decree it. Now, they didn't finish what they started. And they never saw it. But I'm going to take this thing that was decreed and I'm going to set it in front of you. And as you step into it and start decreeing it, I'm going to extend it into its fullness in the future. Now, I see right now the Lord is extending our vision into the future. He's saying, there's an expected end I had for you. Things tried to stop it. Things tried to end it. But I'm going to show you the end of that horizon line because that's what that word, I have predetermined your time and space means. I'm going to show you that horizon line way down there in the next four years, and then I'm going to bring you back to the moment. But you've already seen it. You're going to start saying it, and before long, you're going to be standing in it. 
Now, that's what the Lord is saying now here in New York. It's been so much conflict over this area and so many crazy legal issues over this area. That doesn't stop God's people from seeing into the future and saying, but here's where the kingdom of God is taking us. Here's where we're going, and this is how we're going to get there. Now, that's what these meetings are about. Now, I want to catch us together. We started last night in Staten Island, and that was the birthing place of this nation. One of them, one key place. It's where even yesterday, this week was a historical time where General Howe said, we're coming from England to stop this movement of the new. We went there, we worshiped, and we said, the new will be birthed. You need to say right now, this movement that God is starting will not be stopped. This morning, we ended up in Flushing in Queens, and the Lord said, you know, you can't move forward into harvest without angelic help helping you harvest. Therefore, I'm going to send the angels in, and Queens is where I'm going to start harvesting things because I'm going to flush out the evil that's forming there. Now, you need to start watching it because there's going to be certain things that have been forming out of Queens that gets flushed out. And it'll make, it'll, it'll make national news. It'll make world news. And yet, God says, that is going to be a sign of the harvest ahead. So then he brings us to Bronx and New Rochelle. Just awesome, awesome that we would be here. And he said, this is where the Spirit of God is going to come in might, Apostle. He said, I'm going to, uh, uh, Bishop Ray, he says, I'm going to come with my spirit up in this Bronx, Westchester area. And see, I didn't know anything about that book. And he said, because I had been waiting for years to come and accomplish my purpose, and I'm going to come accomplish it, and my spirit is going to come in here so thick that all of America is going to know I have visited the Bronx. And he said, out of the Bronx, I'm going to start this new glory highway that starts connecting all over America. And I long to go and connect it up in Canada, but there must be a remnant that will arise in Canada and say, bring the highway across. But the highway that connects from Staten Island through Queens through Brooklyn and into Bronx now is going to start in this next year connecting by the Spirit and moving from state to state. First place I ever spoke up here was in 1986, I think it was, and it was in uh, New Windsor, Connecticut. And God said right then, my spirit is coming back. The, and in this area, the first place I ever came and spoke was in the early 70s because I married someone from New Hampshire. And the Lord said that time in those early 70s, I am coming back for the nation I formed. Now, I want you to understand, we're going to all get out of the way as he comes back in and starts reconnecting his plan in these next four years. But without New York City connecting, our nation is in trouble. 
And yet, I come here tonight saying, he's got a place. He's got a place. He's got a remnant. He's already pulling this highway through. And this highway is going to start moving through this land. And we will see his glory again. So I want to say to this place up here, get ready. You are going to have a visitation of Holy Ghost. The third person of the Trinity is going to come in and make himself at home for a while. Now, just get ready for it, and it's going to cause all those things that have been said and what has been prayed, get ready, because Holy Ghost says, I'm going to manifest them. And they're going to start moving in, in new ways, and his people are going to open their eyes and start seeing them. Get ready to sing it in. Because he always starts with Judah going first. Without Judah going first, without that apostolic, prophetic sound being released, and the Lord says you're going to end up singing out things you knew you should have sang out, and you've been pulling back, and the Lord says you're going to sing it out, and they're going to hear it all the way down into Missouri. So the Lord says, get ready. Get ready. You're going to sing out in a new way. Now, I'm telling y'all, the Lord is reconnecting this place. You're going to look at everything that wasn't finished. This is what apostolic leaders do. They look at what wasn't finished, and they say, we're going to finish this. They look at what never got built correctly, and they drop a new plumb line. They look at what wasn't governed in one season or warred for in one season and say, we're going to war it through in this season. See, that is an apostolic anointing. And then we're going to send forth a remnant warring tribe. And God always made Judah and Issachar and uh, uh, Zebulun go together. He always had to have provision interlocked with timing and with sound so that the war would be won. And the Lord says, get ready, New York. You might think you have things controlled all the way across, but I'm bringing in a new plan to set. I would never interrupt Chuck Pierce, <laughs> but I, every time he says a new plan or he says movement or he says sound, what I see visually is a current. So as the sound goes out, what I see is a current bringing people. I keep thinking about the people out there. I just can't help but think about the people out there. And I see a current, like a river rising as the sound goes forth, this, this river rising and, and this strong current bringing these people wow. in. Wow. I speak to Long Island Sound and I say, get ready, this current is about to hit you. Now, I'm telling you, it's about to hit Long Island. Where Y'all have lived so many places, I can't keep up with you. Where are, is that where y'all are? Lord, we say the current is about to hit Long Island Sound. Those girls move around so much, I can't even keep up with them. And all of a sudden, I heard the Lord say, get ready. That, at, Based on this word, that current is coming into that area. And the Lord says, the Spirit of God is going to come here and visit. And y'all get ready. To make him a home here. The Lord says, make him a home here. And so... That's what the Lord wants to do across New York City. The largest metropolis in area worldwide. 
He wants to do this. This is his will. He has people already in place. Do not look at this city and say this is too big. It's not. I've gone to bigger cities than this all over the world. This city, some way, when God showed me when I was with these four here in 2008, had a covenant root, and the Lord said, I'm going to dig down, and I'm going to fertilize that root in these next three years, and you have these three years to watch the fruit start being produced. If it doesn't get produced in these next three years, then I'll deal with it, saith the Lord, and I will bless you for fertilizing with me. So the Lord says, let it happen, watch it happen, and get ready to go with it. Let's stand up. Lord, we thank you for this atmosphere that made your word conducive. And I say there will be a portal here that causes you to give insight to an entire city. Father, I thank you for this place. I thank you for these people. Lord, you didn't need to wear them out. You just needed to have them show up and him say, I chose you for a time such as this. I will now cause you to see your future in a new way and step toward it. Doesn't matter how old you are. Doesn't matter how young you are. The Lord said, I have chose this night to extend a horizon line across this place for the next three years and you watch me work on your behalf and you watch me as I guide you sovereignly into that place that I long for your inheritance to manifest. Let's give a shout and thank you.